Hey, you guys. All right, today I have a super fun 60 minute reformer workout for you. Okay, so we're gonna hit the whole body. You're gonna work through full body sequencing today. So the whole body is gonna be targeted. Of course, we'll drive all of that movement from the core. I'm calling this one twirl the baton, but don't worry, you're not actually gonna twirl the baton or the balance pole. That would be quite difficult. I don't even think I can do that. Uh, but you're gonna be moving that balance pole or baton around with you the entire workout, okay? So we'll have it through each and every sequence, just a little different each time, okay? Now, a lot of times we are gonna have the balance pole or baton laced through your straps, okay? And every time we do that, I'm gonna have you loop them through the short straps today, through every part of the sequence. It's either gonna be both short straps or just one short strap. So I will let you know as we work. Now, it's always an option to go to the longer loops. You'll have a little less tension. Um, but in most of the cases, the short loops are just a little bit more taut so that while we work through the sequencing, you'll have a nice amount of tension and, and the balance will be a little bit more sturdier, less slippage. Okay, so that being said, since I mentioned the balance pole and baton already, you're gonna need your balance pole or your baton. So with my reformer, I have a Balance Body Studio reformer. My reformer came with a balance pole, okay? So, or I, I can't remember if I purchased that extra or not, but. It, a balance pole is what I have and what I will be using today. So a balance pole is quite a bit longer. We are not gonna be using it for any sort of balancing work today. It's gonna be at adding resistance and challenge. So if you have a baton, fantastic. That's gonna be a shorter lever and it's gonna be a little tighter to work with. So a baton would be a little bit shorter. But either way, balance pole or baton, you will have it in the same position as we go through the sequencing. So don't worry about what you have. Um, we are going to have our foot strap on today. So mine is always on, but if you need to place your foot strap on your machine, get it on there because we are gonna be doing some side bending work today with that strap. You are not gonna need your foot bar. So your foot bar folded down and out of the way is exactly where you want it. So probably you don't even see mine in the frame right now, but that one's out of the way. You will need your platform. I don't have a squishy pad out today because for the most part, my feet are gonna be there if anything. I've got a extra light and a light spring on. So for me, that is a yellow and a blue spring on to start. We are gonna be dropping that down to an extra light spring. Now, if your reformer did not come with an extra light spring or you didn't purchase one, then you have that light spring to work with. Things will get a little bit more difficult. That might be where you wanna use your long loops when we have an option. Um, but I will speak to that as we go through as well. This is a more advanced level workout. So I will speak to modifications as we go through. The reason I'm calling it more advanced is because we will be doing a significant amount of standing work on the reformer. So that can challenge your balance um, and stability. So um, otherwise I will give modifications as we go and your reformer box. You're gonna need that. I have mine at the rear of my machine just waiting for me. You won't need it until we set it on top of the reformer for some short box work. So have that towards the rear and completely out of the way to start, but have it nearby. Anything does it? All right, I know that was a lot of talking. Let's get going, okay? So we're gonna start with arm marks. So to start, okay, this is a little bit awkward to get into. I have my balance pole laced through my short loops. Okay, and then I have it resting between my shoulder blocks and the handlebars. Now I'm gonna lay down and I'm gonna bring that pole over my head so my head can be on the headrest. So just take your time getting there. You're gonna have a lot of resistance already on the pole with it laced through the short loops. So you want your hands on the outsides of the straps so that they you stay, keep them on the pole and they don't slip off. You want an equal amount of pull on both sides of your body. Okay, once you are laying down in that supine position, you're gonna bring both legs up into tabletop to start. Now, we're gonna pull that pole over our chest so we've got tension already on the pole and on those straps. And I've got those arms nice and straight up over the chest. My elbows are soft though. We're not gonna lock anything out today. My toes are pointed. We're gonna start by keeping the head down. So on your exhale, you're gonna draw that pull forward to tap the knees and bring it all the way back on your inhale. Good, now when I say all the way back, you are always stopping that pole exactly where it started. So right at underarm height, right over that chest is where you wanna stop the pole. 
Okay, we will be challenging that range of motion, but not yet. Okay, I want you to start with nice control through the core. So we've got that belly button pulled up and in, ribs are closed. My knees are tracking directly over my hips to keep that low belly active. So we've got all parts, all parts of the core working. Okay, my head is down to start. So you can always have your head rest up for that uh, better alignment through the back of the neck. Good, hang on, we've got four more taps right here. Gonna enjoy this here, start to feel that core, that control coming from the core. Good, exhale, tap. Inhale as you release, last two. Exhale, pull that pole towards the knees. Nothing else is changing right now. You feel that upper body start to work. All right, now on the next one, we're gonna add an ab curl. So on your exhale, you're gonna draw the tips of the shoulder blades up, tap the knees, and come all the way down. Exhale, curl, and tap. No momentum, these are controlled lifts. All right, let's go for four, tap, and bring it back. Last three, curl and tap, and bring it back. Last two, we're gonna be adding on. All right, now these are all layers. You know the way I work by now, probably. All those layers really increase the intensity. You're working through endurance strength here. Last one. Now, on the next one, you're gonna do the same thing with the upper body, but one leg is gonna extend. I'm gonna start with extending my right leg. I curl and I tap my left knee. Inhale, bring it back. We're gonna alternate legs. Exhale, curl and tap the right knee. Extend the left leg. Bring it all the way back. Good, so you're alternating leg extension. Okay, keeping that ab curl going. Okay, so endurance strength today, I mentioned that. These layers, there's gonna be quite a few layers through each sequence. Okay, so if a layer doesn't work for you, you stay at the layer before, okay, where you felt more comfortable if it felt too challenging. Or if all else fails and it's getting too tough, you go right back to that starting layer. Okay, here we go. Whew. All right, let's go for four. Extend and tap. Last three, I'm working to keep my shins Parallel to the floor. Last two. Whew, I feel that core already. <laughs> Good, you guys. Last one. Now we're gonna go both legs extend. So on your exhale, curl, reach both legs. There's nothing to tap and come all the way back to start. Try to keep those knees separated. If you wanna close your legs, okay, that's gonna give you a stronger midline connection. But if you can keep your legs separated, that's gonna challenge the core a little bit more. You should feel that psoas running along both sides of the spine as you extend those legs out and pull it all the way back. You're here for six. Curl, reach, and bring it back. Good, curl and reach. Inhale, lengthen. Whoo, we got four. Reach. We are gonna add a little challenge here, okay? We got three and bring it back, no momentum. Notice how I'm pausing at the top of each movement. Okay, I'm I am kind of tapping the top of my thighs. Whew. And bring it back. Now, on your next one, you're gonna hold that extension. So get ready, on your exhale, you're gonna curl, reach, hold. Now my arms, five times, up and overhead, just slowly, and bring it back. Whew, last four. Reach up and overhead. Good, and bring it back. Last three. Feel that waistline. Holy cow. Good, you guys. That anterior core. Last two. Stay with me, stay with me. Keep those ribs closed. Last one. Pull it back. Whew, and come all the way in. Now we're gonna do that one more time. Okay, so I want you to reset. Uh, ground your tailbone. You've got a little lift in the low back, but it's very small. You've got tension on that pole already. Okay, we're resetting right here. This is your last hold like that. On your exhale, you're gonna reach and hold, hold. Arms go overhead five times. Inhale, reach. Exhale, pull it down. Last four. Inhale, reach. Now notice, my biceps never go past those shoulder blocks. They really can't. Last three. Whew. Feel that upper part of the core. Last two. 
Good, you guys notice in my face. Whoo! Last one. And bring it all the way down. Whoo! Okay, that was intense start, right? We're gonna bring that pole down. Okay, so just place it between your shoulder blocks and those handlebars. Okay, because we're gonna come into a plank. So once you've got your pole steady, come on up. Okay, now we're gonna switch our springs. So one yellow or one extra light spring is what I'm gonna be on. If you only have a blue spring, work with that. Okay, you should still be fine with that one blue. So I've got a yellow spring on my carriage. I've got my pole nice and secure right between my shoulder blocks. It can also be right in front of your shoulder blocks. Okay, that's fine as well. Your knees are down. Your toes are going to be on the platform. We're going to come into a wide stance plank. So I want you to take your toes a little bit wider than hips width, okay, on that platform. Your hands you're going to spread all ten fingers out nice and wide. Find that suction cup in the middle of the palm. On your inhale, you're going to pick up those knees and hold. Exhale to prepare. Inhale. Take that carriage all the way out to a nice long plank and hold. Now right here, we are going to do a push-up. So we're going to let our elbows go wide. We're only going to do one. Exhale. Bend the elbows. Inhale. Press it up. Hold. Now we're going to press our hips up and back. So we're going to find a pike. And once you've got that carriage against the bumper, your right hand is going to reach for your left knee. Bring your right hand back to the carriage and come all the way back out. Find a push-up. Just one. Push. Inhale. Press. Bring the carriage in as you pike your hips up and back. Kiss the bumper. Left hand touches the right knee. Bring it back to the carriage. Come all the way out. One push-up. Exhale. Inhale, press. Hips track up and back. Hold. Right hand to left knee. Now, if your hand, picking up your hand off the carriage today does not work for you, don't do it. Just pike those hips. Okay? That push-up, that push-up can be a mini push-up. Left hand to right knee. Good. Bring your hand down. Inhale, take it out. One push-up. Right here, you can do a mini push-up. Two inches down, two inches up. Bring the carriage in. Don't take the hand off the carriage, right? Just pike the hips. Come back out. One push-up, a mini push-up or a full push-up. Your choice. Bring that carriage all the way back in. Left hand taps right knee. Come back. All the way out. One push-up. Whew! Bring it up. Pike those hips up and back. Right hand taps left knee. Or not at all. Okay, your choice. Two more. One push-up. Inhale, press it up. Come all the way back. Left hand to right knee. Whew. Come all the way back out. Find your plank. One push-up. Press. Come all the way and kiss the bumper. Right hand to left knee. Bring your hand back. Come all the way out to your plank. One half push-up. So you're going to bend both elbows. Hold. Don't go anywhere for eight. For seven. For six. For five, last four, and three, last two, press it up, bend your knees and come all the way in. Whew. Warm. I am warm. Are we warm? <laughs> I hope so. All right, you guys, we're going to do a little upper body sequence, right? Yes. Okay, <laughs> so you're going to take that pole, and you're going to take one strap off. So if you're looking at the rear, I want you to take the right strap and take it off and hang it up. Okay, now you're going to turn to face the right of your machine. Okay, so you've got that strap and that pole out in front of you. Now, we're going to do a little stir the pot with this pole. So, my right hand, I'm going to kneel mid carriage. Okay, high kneeling. My right hand is going to come above the loop, and my left hand is below the loop, and I'm still in that short loop. Okay, now I'm going to find an equal amount of pole on both sides of that strap. My left hand is going to hold that strap in place. Okay, my elbows are bent, nice and soft, and I'm going to bring that pole right to my midline. Now from here, I'm going to keep this high kneeling position, sternum over pubic bone, and I'm going to inhale as I take that pole straight out in front of the body. Now, the goal is to keep the pole straight up and down, so those little black bumpers on my balance pole, I'm going to try to keep them aligned with one another. 
on my inhale, I'm gonna twist to the left. So towards the front of my machine, I'm gonna twist. Pelvis is quiet. I'm going to bend my elbows, bring the pole close to my chest, and I'm going to twist through center towards the rear, to the right. Extend the pole, bring it all the way around through center. I'm stirring the pot. Twist to the front, bring the pole in towards my chest, come all the way through center, close to my chest, pull it, or send it back, and come all the way back around. So I'm stirring that pot to the left, out and around to the right, all the way back to center. Now the whole time I'm stirring, okay, I'm trying to keep the pole straight up and down, and I'm keeping my pelvis or my hips quiet. The waistline and the rib basket twist, okay, which allows my shoulder girdle, my head, neck, and shoulders to twist, okay? But I wanna keep that pelvis quiet. So if your booty is gripping or clenching, I want you to relax the booty, and I want you to think about pulling those upper thighs or those suspender straps up along the spine to keep you stable. Okay, we're going to have four more right here, and then we're going to switch directions of this stir. Good, you guys. Inhale as you twist. Exhaling through center. Last three. Good, we've got two more. Lots of control here. No momentum. Now you're going to feel that left arm probably a lot more than the right arm. All different parts of this movement will feel different. Good. Bringing it out and around. Let's go one more that direction since I'm not sure if that was four or not. Let's just make sure. Bring it out and around. And come all the way back through center. Now right here, we're going to switch the direction. We're going to take that pull all the way out in front of the body. Okay, so two, uh, two straight arms. You're gonna twist towards the rear, okay? Pull the elbows in so the pull comes across the chest, all the way twisting to the front and out and around. Okay, so now we're stirring the pot the other way. You can think about stirring a big part of gumbo or, I don't know, sauce or chili, <laughs> whatever works for you. Okay, you're stirring with lots of intention, taking that pull out and around. Finding that control through the upper body. The core keeps the pelvis quiet. Whew. Inhale out and around. Let's go for four more. Good, you guys, last three. Now that those hands are going to keep that strap in place as we continue to move through a different part of this upper body sequence. It's going to get a little different with that pole. Good. This is your last one. I'm going to bring it out and around towards the rear. Come across through the body, through center, all the way around to the middle, and pull that pole all the way back in. Now, we're going to flip that pole horizontal. So now it's going to be the job of my right hand to hold that short loop in place because it's going to want to slip and slide, but I'm not going to allow it to. So I've got my thumb kind of hooked inside that strap. All right, equal amounts of pull on both sides. You want your hands at shoulder width distance apart from each other. We're going to do an overhead press and a side bend. Okay, so on your inhale, you're going to press that pull straight up overhead. We're staying in that high kneeling. And on your inhale, you're going to side bend towards the foot bar. Come all the way back through center on your exhale and draw that pull back down to the chest. Good. Inhale, press. Exhale at the top. Inhale, side bending towards that foot bar, coming all the way back through center and bringing the pole back down to the chest. So I've got an overhand grip on that pole. Inhale, press it up. Now you're going to feel different things here because that strap is only on one side of the pole. Okay, so that right arm is getting a lot of resistance. That left arm, though, is stabilizing. Inhale, press. So that left arm is working hard, too. Side bending towards the foot bar. We're going to go for four more right here. Now, if that high kneeling is too much, you can always come into a low kneeling position. Inhale, press. Exhale at the top. Inhale as you side bend. You're lifting those ribs up and out of the pelvis for that side bend. Last three. Inhale, press. Exhale at the top. Inhale as you side bend towards that foot bar. Nothing changes in that lower half of the body. Good. Coming all the way back. Last two. 
Inhale, we do have one more layer here. Inhale as you side bend. Whew. Feel that upper body, feel those shoulders. Good, inhale, press, hold, side bend towards that foot bar. Length on the right waistline, and left, and left. We're not a crunching that side, we're keeping lots of length, that's why we inhale. Now, holding the pole at the chest, we're gonna take an underhand grip. Okay, underhand grip on that pole. Now, I'm still holding the strap in place with my right hand. I'm gonna extend that pole to chest height, two long arms. Okay, now, you're gonna feel a significant amount of resistance in that right arm. On your exhale, you're gonna bicep curl that pole. We're only going to a 90 degree bend with the elbows. The pole is not coming to my shoulders. Inhale, open it up. Okay, exhale, bicep curl. Inhale, extend the arms. All right, here we go. Now, we're gonna be adding on to this, but right here, we're here for four more bicep curl. Hold, take it out. Last three, find control. You're gonna feel your right waistline a lot, a lot. So we're really challenging those transverse abdominal muscles, that saran wrap around the body today. Last two. Good, inhale, open it up. Last one, you're gonna hold your bicep curl. Hold, now right here, you're gonna twist. So we're gonna twist towards the foot bar, pelvis is quiet. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, twist on your inhale. Exhale, back through center. Four more twists. Inhale. Think of that barbershop pull I've talked about before. You get longer from the inside out as you twist. Whew. Last two. Inhale, twist. Lots of control. Lots of control. Good, last one. You're gonna feel that right arm more than your left arm. Bring it all the way back to center. Whew, and release that all the way down. Okay, keep your pole in that strap. Actually, yeah, keep your pole in that strap. You're gonna step to the floor. So nice and carefully come to the floor. Okay, we're gonna do floor squats. So you still want your pole only on that one short loop. Okay, now we're gonna get that strap Hopefully you can see me. You can see me in the mirror probably pretty well. That strap right to the center of your pole. I'm gonna stay on the floor and I'm at an angle to my reformer. Okay, my back is to you guys on this one. Sorry about that, but this is the only way it's gonna flow nicely. So I'm on a 45 degree angle pointing towards that back riser. My strap is right in the center of the pole. I've got equal amounts of pole on both sides of my body. Okay, I'm gonna bring my feet to a little bit wider than hips distance apart because we're gonna squat. So right here, we've already got two straight arms. We're gonna sit back for a squat and hold. You're gonna find one row, and actually I'm gonna change your grip. Take an underhand grip on the pole. We're gonna do underhand here. So we're gonna row that pole one time in towards the waistline and hold it. So my elbows are bent right at my waist. I've got an underhand grip on the pole, so palms are facing up, and I'm holding my squat. From here, we're gonna lift out of the squat. So on your inhale, stand, hold your row. Exhale, bend. Inhale, stand. Exhale, squat. Okay, so right here, we're just doing full range of motion squats. You're holding that row through the upper body, so that's isometric right now. That doesn't change. You might have the carriage move a little bit as you stand and lower into that squat. You're reaching back with those sits bones, so you get a little tilt of the torso. Collarbone is wide, ribs are stacked over your pelvis. You've got four more squats. Four, broadening through the sitting bones as they reach towards the heels. Inhale to lift, last three. Exhale, bend. Inhale, lift. Whew. Last two. Good, kind of a reset button right here for that upper body. Last one. Now we are gonna take one more to hold. So on your next one, you're gonna find that squat and you're just gonna hold. Now we're gonna work with that upper body. We're gonna release the row. So on your inhale, release that row towards the rear. Exhale, bring it back. Now, if you find you want more tension, take a little step back, okay, from, your, from the rear, closer towards the front. Extend through the upper body and bring the pull in. Inhale, extend those elbows, open them up. So you're holding your squat now. Now your squat is isometric. And we're working a little bit more through the upper body, upper body focus. 
still keeping the ribs stacked over the pelvis. Got a little tilt of my torso. My belly button's pulled up and in between those shoulder blades. And I've got six more rows right here. Six. Inhale, release. Last five. Inhale, release. You've got four. We're going to hold that row again. Whew. Last three. Elbows stay close to the body. Good. Last two. All right. On your next one, you're going to hold your row. Hold it there. We're going to pulse that squat one inch up and down. Now, I want you to think more about your sitting bones, center of your glute, more about your sitting bones than your quads right here. I know you feel your quads. Heels are heavy, but all 10 toes are on the floor. Okay, and we're broadening and narrowing through our sitting bones for eight, seven. It's a one inch lift and lower. Six, five, four, three. Last two. Now right here, you're gonna hold that squat one more time. We're gonna release that row. I want you to try to keep your elbows lifted at underarm height, and you're gonna bicep curl. And you're gonna release the bicep curl. Stay low in your squat. You're gonna exhale as you bicep curl, 90 degree bend. And then we were not bringing the pull to the chin or to the shoulders. It's a 90 degree bend at those elbows. And then we release. And we've got six. Whew. Those isometric holds. Last five. They heat you up. Oh my goodness. Good. Last four. I can feel my cheeks getting redder and redder. <laughs> Last three. Exhale, curl. Last two. Good. All right. On your last one, which is going to be next, okay, right here, we're going to find one more bicep curl and hold it. Hold it. You're going to pulse your elbows one inch up and down. Up and down. So right here, holding your squat, I want you to feel your shoulder blades move up and down the back rib cage for eight. Last seven. Keep those ribs closed. Keep them stacked over the pelvis. You've got five. Whew. We've got four. Last three. And two. Last one. And come all the way up. Oh, oh my goodness. All right. We're coming back onto the reformer. Keep your strap looped how it is. Okay. So come onto your reformer. Now, we're going to do a staggered kneel. I know you guys love these so very, very much. <laughs> but if we work on them a little bit every few times, right, we'll get there. So I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, good. Your left foot is going to come out on front, at the front of the, uh, I'm sorry, on the headrest. Your left foot is on front. Your right foot is behind you. Okay, so left foot on the headrest. You've got the one strap. And I'm just debating whether I want you to take both straps here. No, I think we should be okay with just the one. Okay, so you've got the one strap on the pole. Equal amounts of pull on both sides of the body. Okay, that strap is going to slip and slide a little bit. Don't worry about it so much. I want you to focus a little bit more on your alignment through the lower half. So your left foot is flat on the headrest. Your sternum is over your pubic bone. And we're going to start with that, those arms extended out in front of the chest with that pull. Now, right here, we're just going to row the pull towards the chest. So on your exhale, we're going to draw it in. Inhale, send it out. Exhale, bend the elbows, pull it into the chest. Inhale, take it out. So right here, I want you to focus on your left foot being heavy in the headrest. Your right toes are flat right now. They're not turned under. That right shin is heavy. We're going to change this up. So the next time you pull the pole into the chest, we're going to overhead press this pole. So on your inhale, you're going to press that pole up and overhead. Exhale, bring it back down to the chest. Inhale, press it overhead. Exhale, bring it back to the chest. So you're going to feel a little bit of that weight distribution a little heavier on the left side than it is on the right. That's okay because we, we got to do both sides. So you'll feel this on both sides. Inhale, press. You've got four more overhead presses. Keep the pull close to the chest. Press. I want you to feel the core light up as you take that pull overhead. Last three. Ultimately, that left hand will keep that strap in place. Whew. All right, you guys. Last one right here. Overhead press. 
Now you're gonna hold the pole at the chest. Left foot is heavy, you're gonna turn your right toes under on the back of that carriage. Now you know it's coming, I know you know it's coming. We're gonna hover. Okay, so I want you to not worry about the pole right now, keep it at the chest. You're gonna think about those inner thighs like tweezers. You're gonna pull them up and in, and you're gonna press through your left foot as we hover that right knee one inch off the carriage. Set it down. Inhale, hover. Exhale, set it down. Okay, give me four more like that. Inhale, press. Exhale, lower. Good, three more. Inhale, press. And lower, keep that knee low. Last, just two. Press and down. Good, last one. Press and down. Okay, so that was our prep. Now right here, you're gonna hold your hover. So on the next one, we're gonna press one inch, hold. Now our pull. Inhale, press it up, whoo, and take it down, slow. Now remember, this is a layer. If you are not comfortable here, just hold that hover. You've got four more presses, four. Whew. Last three, no momentum, otherwise we're gonna go flying. Last two, press, good. Last one, hold your press, hold it. Pulse your hover, pulse eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and set it all the way down. Whoo, boy, smoky. Okay, <laughs> all right, set that pole down on between the shoulder blocks or in front of the shoulder blocks, anywhere where it's nice and sturdy because we're gonna get our box. Okay, so grab your box, whoo, and we're gonna bring it to the carriage. Okay, here we go. So we want short box style in front of those shoulder blocks, short box, okay? You're gonna have a little bit of the box hanging off of both sides. Make sure it is equally distributed on that carriage, okay? Now, you're gonna take your pull off the strap. So no straps, just the pull by itself. Okay, your springs are fine how they are. You're gonna sit with your right leg on the box. <sighs> okay, I'm still letting my heart rate come down from that hover. Your left foot is gonna come underneath that foot strap, okay? So right here, I want you to find half lotus with your right leg, pole is in your hand, and you've got your left foot hooked underneath that foot strap. Okay, let's make sure I don't forget anything, okay. Now right away, side bending is tricky. I do not want you to rest your left leg on that platform. You need to lift up into your strap. So the key is to lift from the side of the leg so you get it from the top of the hip, not just the ankle. So your toes need to be shining straight forward so your leg is in parallel. You're lifting from the side of the leg. Okay, the side. So the top side of my foot is facing up lifting into that strap. Now with my pole at my chest, overhand grip, I'm gonna find a really nice diagonal. I'm gonna lengthen out my left waistline and lengthen out my right waistline so both sides are long. Okay, right from here. Staying lifted in that strap, my leg is not resting on my box and it's not resting on the platform. We're gonna inhale as we press that pole overhead and exhale, bring it back to the chest. Inhale, press. Exhale, bring it back. So finding that long length, you are holding yourself up with that transverse abdominal muscle nice and strong through that left waistline. Press and bring it back. You've got four more. Press and bring it back. Last three. Inhale, press. Good. Last two. Press, lift up into that strap. The nice thing is that strap is on metal carabiners. So if I wiggle, or I let loose, I let that tension go, you're gonna hear that strap. I don't wanna hear that strap. On the next one, keep the pull at the chest. We're gonna curl. So we're gonna exhale as we curl. Inhale back to find length. Exhale, curl. Inhale back. Now you can switch that breath up and we can use that inhale to maintain length on the left waistline as we lift. So if you wanna exhale here, Inhale as you lift. Okay, finding that curl with length internally, which translates outside the body. You've got four. Curl, lifting up into that strap. You've got three. My shoulders are square towards that right side of the reformer. Last two. Whew. Good, you guys. Last one. 
Hold your diagonal. Now right here, we're going to curl, come back, overhead press. Whew. Curl, come back, overhead press. Four more. Curl, lengthen out, overhead press. Good. Last three. We just have a little pulse coming up and overhead press. Just right, just the last two. Whew. Side bending. Oh my goodness. Last one. Hold your pull overhead. Little curl. Little curl. Eight. Seven. Whew. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. And bring it all the way in. Whew. And up. Oh my goodness. I felt the whole left side of the body. I hope you did too. All right, you guys. Now, now's a good time if you want to grab a sip of water. Okay, we're going to hit the other side. So this is our midpoint, okay? There's probably going to be a skippable ad that comes up. You can hit skip and continue on with me, or you can take a quick break, okay? We're going to sit rear facing, rear facing. All right. All right, you guys. So rear facing, we're going to keep that pull. We're going to take the straps, short straps on, lace them on either side of the pull. Okay, now right here, we're going to do a little roll down sequence with this, with these straps. So you're going to sit nice and tall on your box. Okay, you want to think crown of the head, reaching away from that tailbone. I'm directly on the tips of my sitting bones. I've still got an extra light spring on, so one yellow. Okay, I'm going to bring that pole out in front of the body so my arms are at underarm height. Now, from here. I'm going to hinge off of my sitting bones. So that means I want to hinge back with a flat back. So about two inches, I'm going to inhale off my sitting bones. Now, on my exhale, I'm going to curl at the tailbone, the low back, the mid back. But as I do that, I'm going to scrape that pull up and across the chest and overhead. And then once I reach that shaky point, I'm going to come all the way back up arms come back to chest height, sitting nice and tall. Okay, I'm going to make sure I have enough room back there. Okay, make sure you have enough room behind you on the box. You're going to hinge, okay, two inches off the sitting bones. Now I'm going to curl at the tailbone. I'm taking that pole across the chest as I roll down. Keep those feet heavy on the headrest. And then you're going to come all the way back up, nice and tall on those sitting bones. Okay, we're going to exhale, hinge. Curling at the tailbone, rolling that, or curling through the spine, taking the pull across the chest. Good. Pressing it overhead. My biceps are in front of my ears. And then I'm going to allow myself to come all the way back up to the tips of the sitting bones. Pull comes back to chest height. Two more like that. Let's inhale off the sitting bones. I think I said exhale before, but I meant inhale. Now we're going to exhale as we curl the tailbone, the low back, the mid back. The pole is going to come across the chest. We're going to reach it up and overhead. Hold for just a beat. And then you're going to pull all the way back up. Pull at chest height. One more. Hinge off the sitting bones on your inhale. Exhale, curl the tailbone, the low back, the mid back. Hold it right there as you take the pole overhead. Good. Coming all the way back up with intention, with purpose. You're holding control. You're not just letting the straps pull you. Now, at the top, you're going to take that left leg and you're going to reach it long in front of you. Extend through that um, hamstring. Point the toe. We're going to find one roll. So you're going to hinge off the sitting bones on your inhale. You're going to exhale and you're going to roll, scraping the pole across the chest. Now, right here, the pole is going to go up and overhead and back down to chest height. Okay, you're stay keeping that roll up and overhead and back to chest height. Four more. Inhale, press. So lots of core control right here. You're in that roll down. It should feel shaky. Whew. Hold on. We are going to twist out of this. You've got three more presses. Inhale, press. Exhale, bring it back to chest height. Last two. Inhale, press. Biceps are in front of my ears. Always, always. Whoo, it's getting shaky up there. Last one. Bring it all the way back to chest height. Now, right here, we're going to twist. Keep that leg extended. Keep that roll. You're going to inhale as you take your right ribs towards the left. And then all the way back to center. So what we're looking for is that diagonal connection through the torso. Those right ribs attaching to the left inner thigh. That connection point. Whew, shaky, shaky. Hang on. You've got four more twists. Four, 
Inhale for that internal length. Last three. Exhale back to center. You've got two. Hang on, hang on. Whoo. Last one. And come all the way back up. Whoo. Thank God we only have two sides. Here we go. Bring that pull back to chest height. That right leg is going to extend all the way out, point the toe. Okay, that feels good through the hamstring. We're going to hinge on your inhale, hinge off of those sitting bones. Now we're going to roll, okay, tailbone, low back, just to that mid-back point right there. Bring the pull to the chest. Now keeping that leg extended, you're going to inhale, press that pull overhead. Exhale, bring it back to chest height. Inhale, press. Exhale, release. So that internal breath. All right, that inhale is when the diaphragm drops. We get longer from the inside out. Last four. Inhale, press. Keep that core controlled. Pull those ribs together. Pull that belly button in. Last three. Good, you guys. You've got two. I don't think you can see my shake on camera, but it's shaky. Good. Last one. Okay, next one, you're gonna hold at the chest, right here. We're gonna inhale as we rotate left ribs to right inner thigh. Exhale, back through center. Good, inhale, rotate, twist. Exhale, back through center. Make it controlled, make it smooth. That connection, that diagonal sling, four more. Inhale, twist. Exhale, through center. Last three. Left ribs reaching for that right inner thigh. Whoo! Last two. Come all the way back through center. And your last one. Oh my goodness, thank goodness. Come back through center. Whoo! And pull it all the way up. Oh, and there's no break because we're going to go right to that side bending. So take your straps off of your pole, hang them up. Okay, we're going through it all for the other side now, okay? So you know these moves. My back is going to be to you a lot this time. You can see me in the mirror, though. Okay, so we're half lotus on the box. Left knee is bent. My inner thigh is shining up. My right foot is going to come underneath that foot strap. So again, you want your right inner thigh shining down towards the box, your right toes pointing straight forward. You're going to lift up into your strap so your entire leg and your hip and your transverse abdominals are attached to that strap. Okay, overhand grip on your pull. Lengthen out, find your very best diagonal line so you've got length on your right waistline and length on your left. Whew, right here, we're gonna stay in this diagonal line, shoulders are square. We're gonna inhale, press the pull overhead. Exhale, bring it back. Good, inhale, press. Exhale, bring it back. Now the goal, my goal is for you to not hear that strap wiggle. Okay, we want to keep it nice and taut. You've got four more. Inhale, press. Exhale, bring it back. Try not to twist. Keep length on both sides. Three. And bring it back. Whew. Last two. And bring it back. Whew. Okay, on this one right here, you're going to hold it at the chest. Now from here, we're going to curl. Inhale, curl. Exhale, release. Now remember, you can take this breath either way. Okay, that inhale breath is going to challenge that length on the right waistline. As you curl with your inhale, it's going to allow you to give you a more, little more space on that right side. Whew, my watch is about to talk to me. There we go. Curl. Good. Let's go for four more curls. Inhale, lift. Exhale. I'm still lifting up into that strap. Last three. Whew. Last two. Okay, here it goes. About to get intense. Good. Last one. Okay, on your next one, you're going to hold your diagonal. Lift the pole overhead. Bring it back and curl. Ha! Huh. Lift it overhead. Bring it back and curl. You've got four more. Extend. Bring them in. Curl. Ha! Huh. Last three. Lift. You've got this. I know you do. We've only got two more. We can hold on to this together. Lengthen, bring it back, and curl. You're so strong. Hang on. You've got one. Bring it back, and curl. Here come those pulses on your next one. Lengthen out. Take the pull overhead. Here we go. Eight, seven, six. Lift into your strap. Five, four, three, two, ha! Huh and bring it all the way in. Whoo, 
holy moly, right? You can't release your foot fast enough. <laughs> That's how I feel. Okay, we're going to take the box off. So come off your reformer to the other side. Okay, you're going to take that box and you're going to set it away from you because we don't need it anymore at all for the rest of this workout. So all the way at the back, okay? Now, from here, we're going to come into those floor squats. Let's just double check myself. To make, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I almost forgot our staggered kneel. Could you believe that? We don't want to forget that. We love it so much. Lace your pull through the right short loop. Okay, so I'm rear facing my strap on the right. I'm going to take the pull through my short loop. Okay, now my right foot is going to come onto the headrest. I've got that strap centered on my pole right now, but it is going to slide to the right. Don't worry about that. Just you keep the pole equal distance on both sides of the body. Okay, now from here, we're going to press that right foot heavy into the headrest. My left shin is flat. My toes are down to start. We're going to extend those arms straight at chest height right towards the rear. Okay, right from here, we're going to row. We're going to draw those elbows wide. Pull comes to the chest. Inhale, take it forward. Exhale, row. My sternum is lined up over my pubic bone. Okay, so I've got nice structure and strength through the torso. Good, now already that strap is starting to slide on me. Okay, ignore it. Okay, so it's gonna be more loaded on your right side, and that's exactly how we want it because we were more loaded on the left before. Now on this one, we're gonna draw the pole in towards the chest. We're gonna inhale as we press that pole overhead. Try to keep your pole level, okay? So your right side's heavier. I want you to think about both sides um, lifting at the same speed, okay? They go together. Inhale, press. Exhale, bring it down. And my arms are shoulder width apart, okay? Or just, just outside those shoulders. Pressing into my right foot. Let's go for four more overhead. Inhale, enjoy this here, right? We would want to stay here forever if we could. Last three. Inhale, press. That right foot needs to start to get really heavy. Last two. Good, you guys. Last one. We're going to find that connection with those inner thighs, pelvic floor, and psoas. Right here, we're going to turn those left toes under on the carriage behind us. We're going to just hover. So don't worry about your pull right now. Keep it at chest height. You're going to inhale as you find those inner thighs like tweezers. We're going to lift that left knee off one inch the off the carriage and lower. Inhale, lift, and lower. Notice it's very small, right? Inhale, lift, and lower. You've got four more. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Last three. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Last two. Inhale, press. Pressing through that right foot nice and heavy. Good. Last one. Okay, now here we go. We're going to set up for that hold. So on your next one, you're going to hover and hold. Now with control, with control and slow speed, you're going to inhale and press that pull up overhead. Exhale, bring it back to chest height. Whew. Inhale, press. Exhale, bring it back. You've got four more. Inhale, press that pull with control. Last three. Use your breath here. Exhale, bring it down. Last two. Inhale, press. Keep that back knee low. Whew. Good. Last one is a hold up and overhead. Hold it. Pulse. Eight pulses. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and bring it all the way down. Whew. Oh, sweaty. That's the one that gets you right there. At least it does for me. Okay, now you're going to step to the floor. Back to the floor. Oh, okay, that's over and done with. <laughs> We're going to lace the pole through. Oh, I'm sorry. No, keep it on that one loop. I'm getting ahead of myself. Keep it on that one strap that you had it on just now, okay? You're going to keep that strap at the center of the pole. We're going to step at an angle towards the rear of the reformer. So I'm at a 45-degree angle facing that rear riser, okay? Feet are a little bit more than hip width distance. I'm catching my breath. You're going to take an underhand grip on that pole. <sighs> okay. Right here. We're going to bring that pole out off chest height. We're going to find one squat. You're going to reach those sitting bones back and hold. You're going to take one row. You're going to pull those elbows 
whoop, I gotta step a little closer to my reformer, in towards your waistline. Hold. Okay, now right here, you're gonna isometrically hold that row. You can always take a little step back towards the front if that helps with a little more tension. Okay, you're gonna inhale as you stand out of your squat. Exhale as you reach back with those sitting bones. So right here is reset button again. Okay, I want you to take this time right now to let the heart rate drop a little bit, okay? That was an intense sequence we just came off of. Okay, and hopefully, if you weren't able to take all the layers, I want you to try to come back to this workout, okay? And get to the point where you can at least hit one or two reps, right? It's, it's not easy, I know that. I know it's not easy, but I wanna give you room for progression in these workouts. So that's why I do all the layers I do because I can hit all levels that way. All right, here we go, four more squats. I stop talking. <laughs> Reach those sitting bones back for your heels. You're just holding that row right now. Last three. Good, broadening through the sitting bones, finding that beautiful squat. Last two, feet are flat on the floor, all 10 toes too. Whew. All right, you guys, on the next one, you're gonna hold your squat. Reach back with those sitting bones and hold. Now here, we're gonna row. We're gonna inhale, take those arms forward. Exhale, pull the elbows back in and down. I'm gonna step a little closer towards the front, get a little more resistance on that strap. Row it in. So you might feel like you can take a little bit more resistance, so step closer to your foot bar, okay? If you feel like you, can use a, you could take a little bit more on that row. Okay, remember we still have that bicep curl and all of that as well. Okay, you're sitting into that squat, your torso is tilted, those ribs are beautifully stacked over your pelvis, they're closed. Okay, let's go for four more. Four, whoo, last three. Inhale, extend those arms, last two. Ha, good. Last one, you're gonna hold your row again. Right here, we're gonna pulse that squat. One inch up and down, focusing on my sitting bones, the narrowing and broadening of the sitting bones for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, last two. Hold it one more time, take that, those arms all the way out. Now we're gonna find that bicep curl, 90 degree bend at the elbow. Stops right there and then we unfold. Keeping the ribs close, keep that tilt to the torso. Nothing else changes. We just bend and extend at the elbow. Ha! Here we go. Let's go for four more. Four. Good. Last three. Good. We've got two more. Bend. Good. And release on that inhale. Last one. You're going to hold it right there. Now right here, you're going to take your elbows one inch up and down. Up. And down right here is where I want you to feel those shoulder blades move up and down the back rib cage. You've got six. Ha. Huh. Good. Five. You've got four. Hang on, hang on. Last three. Stay low in that squat. Last two. Last one. And bring it all the way up. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay, <laughs> we're gonna come into that stir the pot. Make sure I'm correct, yes. Okay, so my back is to you again. Keep your strap on the pole. Okay, we're gonna be in that high kneeling position. Okay, this time, okay, you're gonna have your left hand on top, your right hand on the bottom. So left hand is above the strap, right hand is below the strap, and you're gonna have that right hand just holding that uh, loop in place. Okay, pull is straight up and down. I'm high kneeling, inner thighs are drawing up along the spine, sternum over pubic bone. I'm gonna inhale as I take that pull straight out. It is straight up and down. I'm gonna inhale as I twist towards the foot bar, pull it in towards the chest, come around all the way to the rear and come back through center. Arms are long when I come back through center, twisting on your inhale to the right, bringing it, the pull right through chest center, close to the body all the way towards the rear, extend and come back out through the middle. Oh, all right, this feels good. Hang on, keep that pull straight up and down, that polar baton straight up and down. Okay, we're gonna go four more in this direction and then we'll switch directions, coming around. 
and in. Good, last three. That, those hips stay quiet. It's waistline up that rotates. Good, last two. Finding that range of motion right there, still keeping those hips quiet. Okay, so your range of, everybody's range of motion is going to be a little different. Last one. Oh, that control. All right, now right here, keeping it at center. Extend that pull back out. Now this time you're going to inhale towards the rear. Twist. Pull it in. Come across the body and take it towards the front. Inhale across the front of the body. It's long. Okay, you pull it in when you're facing the rear. Comes close to the body as you extend towards the front and come out and around. Keeping the top of the pole and the bottom of the pole lined up with one another. Whew, I feel that upper body today. Last four. Good, you guys, three more right here. Twist, bring it out and around. You got that side bend, that overhead press and that side bend, last two. Ooh, this is your last one coming around towards the rear. Arms are long. Bend the elbows. Bring the pull close. Extend across the body. All the way back to chest center. Now, we're going to pull the pole in. We're going to flip the pole horizontal. Your left hand is going to hold that short loop in, the in, uh, in place. Arms, palms are just at that shoulder width, okay? Again, high kneeling. If you can stay high kneeling, stay high kneeling. Inner thighs are suspenders. We're going to inhale as we press that pull up and overhead. Hold. Inhale as you side bend towards the front. Coming back on your exhale and bringing that pull back down to your chest. Okay, so you're going to feel more weight on that left arm. Okay, that's normal. That's what we want. It was the opposite before. Okay, whew, so finding that control. Inhale, exhale at the top. Inhale as you bend with length on both sides of the waistline. You've got four more just like this. Inhale, press up and overhead, hold. Side bend, lifting those ribs out of the pelvis, bring it down, you've got three more. Huh. Inhale, press, hold. Side bend, Ha. Huh. come back. Bring it down. Last two. Good. Relax the booty if the booty is gripping. Think about those inner thighs. Those inner thighs are so important here. That psoas. Whew. This is your last one just like this. Inhale, press. Smile because it's the last one. Whew. Come back. Okay, bring that pole down. Now we're going to switch our grip. We're going to take an underhand grip. My left hand is still holding that short loop in place. Okay. Ah, we're going to take that pull straight off the chest. Hold. Okay, now right here, keeping sternum over pubic bone again. Don't lean back on this one. 90 degree bend with the elbows, bicep curl. So this one's going to, might, might feel a little awkward. It takes a lot of control to find this alignment right here. There is not a lot of movement. So that's part of what makes it feel so different. Okay, you've really re got that ton of resistance on the left side. Hang on, you've got four. Inhale, release. We've got that twist coming up in three. Keep your collarbones nice and wide. Last two. Try not to twist. So it's anti-rotation right here. Okay, on your next bicep curl, you're going to hold it. Okay, find your bicep curl. Hold. Keep your elbows lifted. You're going to inhale as you rotate towards the front. Exhale back to center. Pelvis is quiet. Inhale, rotate. Exhale back to center. You've got four more. Inhale, twist, ri waistline, rib cage, pelvis quiet. Last three. I can't say that enough. I, I know I sound like a broken record. Last two. Imagine someone is holding your hips in place and they're not allowed to move. Last one. Exhale back through center. Whew, and bring it all the way down. Holy moly. All right. We don't have time for much more. So I had a couple more things planned, but I'm going to cut it back a little bit. So we're going to do a rear-facing bicep curl. This one is also standing. Okay, so lace your strap, or I'm sorry, lace your pole back through both short loops. Okay. Now, once you've got that, we are slowly going to stand on the reformer. So please, if you'd rather stay kneeling, 
you can stay on your knees, okay? But if you feel comfortable, grab onto your shoulder blocks. You're gonna go nice and slow with me. You're gonna stand on your reformer, toes pointing towards the rear so your legs are in parallel. In this position, right away, I want you to find a demi squat. So a shallow squat, knees are bent, torsos tilted just a bit, low back is nice and flat so your ribs are stacked over your pelvis. You're gonna take an underhand grip on that pole. Straps are on the inside of my hands, okay? We're gonna take that pole out to chest height. Okay, I've still got that demi squat. Right here, I'm gonna bicep curl with control. If I whip that pole, I'm gonna take a nosedive into the well. I don't want you to do that at home. I'm not there to save you. Okay, so I want you to move nice and slow. I want you to feel your right and left waistline right here, more than anything else. Feel the waistline grip the pole and bring it back. Good, exhale, curl, tighten the belly button as you do that. You stay in that squat, your legs are never straight here. They're not gonna straighten at all. You've got four. Release, whoo, the amount of control in today's workout is also what makes this so challenging. Right, we always have a lot of control, but today, today it is quite a bit, lots of holds. And this balance pole makes things really shaky and really wobbly, right? You gotta keep that balanced weight and that balanced resistance. On your next one, you're gonna hold your bicep curl. Hold that curl. Now you're gonna pulse your demi squat. One inch up and down, okay? So focus is a little, little tricky as well, right? You gotta focus on those sitting bones right here. Focus on your sitting bones. You've got eight, seven, six, five. You should feel your back body. Four, three, two, hold your bicep curl, hold your squat, pulse your elbows up one inch and down, up and down, eight, ha, huh. seven, you've got this, six, hang on, five, we've got two more exercises, three, two, one, and come slowly down to your knees. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your hands to your shoulder blocks and you're gonna come down to your knees. Oh boy, okay. Keeping your straps exactly how, you are, how they are. You're gonna straddle your reformer. Okay, so I'm gonna sit down for a second. Oh, that feels nice, right? But we don't have time to sit down. So we are gonna keep our legs in a turnout. So toes turned out at a 45 degree angle. We're gonna plie over the reformer, okay? so. You're gonna come up off your carriage. Okay, we're nice and wide, right? So we have no choice. Once you're in this plie, you are in it. So we are gonna hold this plie. Now, we're gonna start with a row. So you've got overhand grip. You can always bring yourself closer to the springs, okay, for more resistance. Now from here, keeping the sternum over the pubic bone. So we're tall, right? In a plie, we are tall. You're gonna exhale as you draw the pole into the chest. Inhale, release. Exhale, row. Inhale, release. You've got this. Okay, we're not here forever. I promise you it's so close to being over. You're here for six. Inhale, release. Last five. Keep opening those inner thighs. You've got four. Collarbones wide, elbows go wide. Last three. Good, you've got two. On your next one, you're gonna hold your row. You're gonna do a little butterfly of your inner thighs, a little open and close, right? They can't go far. We are already, I'm already maxed at five foot tall. You don't, I can't straddle much wider than this. Good, hang on, you're butterflying those inner thighs. Isometric hold on that row. You've got six, five, four, three, two, Guess what? The next one, hold, you're gonna flip your grip, underhand grip, okay? Extend those arms, bicep curl one more time. Exhale, 90 degree bend. Inhale, release. Try to keep your elbows lifted so we get a little bit more work on the bicep, right? Whole body is working, but core too, right? You feel that core, I hope so. I don't think you can really get around it at this point. Six, whoo. Last five, you've got this, hang on. Last four, we've got just one last hold. You've got three, huh. last two, 
Okay, your next bicep curl is a hold. It's a hold right here. Hold it. Pulse your plie. One inch up and down. It's a tiny little lift and lower from those upper inner thighs. Hang on for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, last two, and bring it all the way in. Now, before you sit down, make sure the carriage is under you. <sighs> okay, get rid of the pole, all right? This is your last and final thing. We're gonna end in a plank, forearm plank. So hang up your straps, okay? Set the pole down on the side. It is out of the way now. You're gonna stay on that extra light spring. You're gonna kneel on your carriage, rear facing. Toes are gonna come to the platform. Forearms are gonna come down, okay? So I'm gonna have ninja palms. My pinky fingers are connected. You can always have your palms flat if that feels better in your body. For me, I like, I like my palms facing in. From here, okay, I'm gonna take my carriage all the way out on an inhale. Take it out and hold. Okay, my legs are hip width distance apart, okay? Right from here, we're gonna shoulder hinge. So on your inhale, you're gonna send your elbows forward one inch and back. We have a little trend with those elbows. You notice that? One inch forward and one inch, one inch up and one inch down. Okay, so again, you're feeling the shoulder blades move up and down the back rib cage. You're pulling your belly button up and in your eyes are right between those wrists. Okay, you're not looking at your toes. You're not looking at your knees. You're not looking up at the rear of the reformer. You're looking straight down. You're breathing in between those shoulder blades. Okay, lots of mobility at that shoulder. Reaching and lengthening out of your transverse abdominal muscles. So feel the length on both sides of the waistline. You've got six. Whew. Last five. Hang on. You've got four. Last three. Ha. Last two. On your next one, you're gonna hold your elbows extended. So take them all the way out to where you feel a shake, and I want you to stay right there. Stay right there and shake for eight, for seven, for six, can you pull your belly button tighter? For five, last four, can you spread your shoulders wider? For three, last two, elbows come back. Bing, bring the carriage in, knees down. Whoo, oh my goodness, all right. Right here, take those knees the width of the reformer. Take those arms all the way out to the frame and just take a really nice child's pose right here. Those arms a little bit wider like this towards the frame rather than on the headrest. I hope you feel your back body stretch out a little bit more. That's what I want you to feel, that big X you're making through your back. Hold right there. Two big breaths. You're going to inhale, making your rib cage wider. Inhale. Exhale, all of that air out. Good. One more. You're going to make that rib cage wide. Inhale. Exhale, all that air out. Whew. Okay, right from here, guys. We're going to come on up. We're going to do a couple mermaid side bends. So if you have time to stretch with me, I always leave the stretch to the end. I want to work you for that full 60 minutes. If you have time for a little stretch, stay with me. Okay, your right shin is going to be up against your shoulder blocks. Your left leg is going to be hooked in front. You're going to take your left hand to the edge of the reformer, your right hand to the headrest. We're going to start with that right arm coming up up and over your ear, finding a nice side bend, a nice stretch out of that right waistline. Coming all the way back through center on your exhale. Inhale, take your left arm up and over that left ear. Bicep is in front of my ear. Okay, I'm keeping my shoulders square and I'm picking my ribs up out of my pelvis. Hold that there. Okay, one more time. Each side come back through center. Right arm comes up and over, finding length on the right side of the body, trying not to dump into the left side. Coming all the way back through center. Inhale, take that left arm up and over. Whew. Now staying in this mermaid stretch, okay, we're going to take the right arm across the body and give it a little stretch, a little traction, a little pull. Keep your shoulder blade down around the ribs. Keep the shoulder away from the ear for four. Last three, I'm still shaking. I don't know if you can see it. Last two. <laughs> Good, let that arm release. Take that left arm. We're gonna take it across the body, same thing. Okay, hold it right there. Think of that shoulder blade again, wrapping the rib cage for four. Last three, last two, 
Whew, releasing that arm. Okay, now we're gonna come through center. Okay, we're gonna do one more child's pose. Okay, so knees are gonna go the width of the reformer. Hands are gonna come out to the platform. You're gonna press away from that platform. Now, we're gonna walk the left hand over to the left side of the platform. And my right hand is gonna come on top of my left. I'm gonna reach my right sitting bone back. Okay, so I'm lengthening out of the right side of my waist for four, three, last two. Walking your hands all the way through center, taking my right hand over to the right side of the platform. Left hand's gonna come on top. I'm gonna push my left hip back away from my left rib cage. Hold that stretch right there for four and three, last two. Good, walking back through center, we're gonna come on in. We're gonna take that mermaid stretch on the other side. So this time your right leg will hook in front, your left leg will be against the shoulder blocks. Okay, right from here, left hand on the headrest, right hand on the edge of the carriage. You're gonna take that left arm up and over on an inhale, lengthening the left ribs out of the waist. Hold, coming back through center. Right arm comes up and over for that stretch on an inhale. This feels nice on this side. Right ribs out of that right waistline. Now, you know, if mermaid is uncomfortable for you, you can absolutely sit crisscross applesauce for this, or you can get a yoga block and set it underneath your right hip. That'll elevate you a little bit. Come back to center. Take that left arm up and over the ear. And back to center. Good, one more. Inhale, right arm up and over. Hold that stretch and breathe. Good, now coming all the way back through center, we're gonna do a different arm stretch on this side. You're gonna take your arms up and overhead, but now your right elbow is gonna bend, well, and so is your left elbow, but your left hand is gonna take your right elbow. Okay, and you're gonna reach your fingertips right down the center of your spine. Hold that stretch right there for four, for three, feeling that tricep last two, Good, releasing that, extending both arms, left elbow bends, your right hand grabs the left elbow, my left fingertips now reach down the center of my spine, hold that there, pulling that belly button in still for four, last three, last two, <sighs> right? Come all the way back now. You're gonna let your legs come off the edge of the carriage. I'm gonna turn to face you, just so you can see me. You guys can stay whichever direction you wanna be. We're gonna take that right leg Cross it over the top of the left thigh. Okay, we're gonna gently press down on that right knee. So you're gonna feel the, the right hip and that right glute a little bit. Now, if you want to get a little deeper here, you're gonna bring both arms up and overhead and you're gonna fold down over that right inner thigh. Now, as you do that, your right elbow can also press into that left leg and find that stretch right there for four, last three, and two, we're gonna take that other leg, come all the way back up, take that right foot back to the floor. Left ankle crosses your right thigh, gently press down on that left knee, opening up that hip a little bit. Now both arms are gonna come up and overhead on an inhale, exhale as you round down over that leg, and as you do that, bend that left elbow and gently press on that left leg at the same time. Hold that stretch right there for four. Last three, two, come all the way back up. Set that left foot on the floor. You're gonna hang down over bent knees. So keep your knees very soft right here. Okay, let your head, neck, and shoulders just relax. And on your inhale, you're gonna round and stack that spine. One vertebrae at a time. Your head is the last thing to pick up and last stretch at the top. You're gonna bring your legs together. Okay, if you want, you can take that actually, that right foot in front of your left foot. Both arms come up and overhead. Your left hand is gonna grab your right wrist and you're gonna traction and pull that arm up and out of the waist. Hold that stretch right there, breathe. Good, coming all the way back through center. Uncross the legs, take your left foot over your right. Your arms come overhead, now your right hand grabs your left wrist and you're gonna traction and lift that arm up out of the waist. Find that side bend right there, three two all the way back to center guys uncross those legs you did it nice job 
I know the stretch takes you over, right? And we're like 10 minutes over that 60 minute mark. But if you don't want to do the stretch and you want to save that for another time, you can absolutely do that. I hope you enjoyed this workout. If you did, please like this video. It helps me bring you more. Leave a comment below. I respond to each and every one of you. It may take me a while. In fact, at this point, I have several messages in my inbox that I need to get back to. But know that I know that and I'm getting to them. So I absolutely will respond to you questions, feedback, criticism, uh, happy notes, anything you've got for me, I love to hear it. Okay. Now on that note, I offer a live reformer workout once a week. It's a little bit more intimate than, than this, obviously, because I can't see you and I can't speak to you. This live workout is over the zoom platform. So I get to be one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, the group is very intimate. So at this time, um, you sign on, it's your choice whether you have the camera on or the camera off, it's totally up to you. I'm never gonna require you to do that, to have your camera on if you don't want it on. If you do, however, I watch you, I do the workout along with you. So exactly what you had right here is what I do with you, but along the way, I keep an eye on you, I talk to you before and after the workout so we can talk about modifications or something that felt funny and I can go over it again, we can do it together. So it's a really good way if you want to get deeper into your practice um, to work a little bit closer and one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, all the sessions are recorded, so I email that out to the group that participated immediately after the workout, and you can do that. You can save that in your archives to do again and again. These workouts are not something that is posted on YouTube. They are special, specially crafted for the live group. So you should know that as well. Um, so you'll get double workouts that way. Uh, so if you're interested, please send me a message. You can comment on this video. You can find me on social media. Jess P. Fit is the name. So I'm really easy to find. Send me a direct message and I will get back to you. I'll ask you for your email and we'll communicate that way. And that's it, you guys. I'm in a talky mood today, right? It seems like. I hope you love this. I did. I feel worked out. I think I just need to take a minute. <laughs> so I hope you feel that way as well. Rested relaxed now at this point um, and I will see you next time. Good job.